Welcome to the world's number one green reading system that's taken over the world of golf. Aimpoint Express. Aimpoint Express is a lot easier than I thought it would be. Aimpoint Express is teaching golfers how to be expert green readers in weeks. Anyone can learn Aimpoint Express. It's not just for the pros. Created by amateur golfer and software developer, the mastermind behind this game-changing technique is Mark Sweeney. You've probably heard your whole life that green reading is a God-given talent and that either you have it or you don't. You've probably also heard that it takes decades to be a great green reader. Well, Aimpoint Express is going to prove all those statements wrong. His method has been adopted by golf professionals worldwide, including the top men and women players in the sport. It's allowed me to trust my reads more, and I really understand different types of greens, different types of hole locations, and I've won 10 times in the last three years, so I think, you know, that's the proof in itself. But their secret to successful putting is really no secret at all, as Mark's expertise has been taught to thousands of golfers of all skill levels, from the pros to the beginners, dramatically improving their putting game. <laughs> it can take a golf professional up to 20 years to be an expert green reader. With me, it only took a matter of weeks. Aimpoint Express teaches you the fundamentals for understanding and assigning a value to slope to predict how much the ball breaks in every situation. Green reading is a skill that you can learn regardless of your experience or ability. And with my training, you'll benefit from 10 years of research, simulations, and hands-on experience to read putts of any length on any green as good as the pros. Originally conceived as a groundbreaking, real-time greens predicting software for live televised tournaments, Mark has earned an Emmy on his way to changing the game forever. And now, this revolutionary system is yours to master. You'll be able to adjust to changing green speeds and ignore optical illusions that fool even the most experienced golfers. I've taught thousands of secrets to reading greens, from beginners to the best players in the world, and now I'm going to teach you two. <laughs>
what we're going to do now is really the foundation or the primary skill for our green reading, which is feeling slope and putting a value or a number on how much slope we feel. I've marked out on the green slopes from 1 to 5 percent, and the way I did that is I took a digital level, set on percentage of slope. It's not on degrees, it's set on percent. It's very important. I don't necessarily need this as a player, but if you want to train yourself more efficiently, you'll want to get a digital level with percent of slope and use it for training. And I simply found spots on the green that match those numbers. And what we're going to do is we're going to stand on each one and just associate that feeling with a number. Then we'll have our foundation to be able to start applying this to putts. So we're each going to stand directly across it, and the key is to keep our knees softly bent and let yourself go with the slope. We don't want to lean into the slope. Two or three seconds maximum, and then we're going to switch to the next number. And each one will feel a little bit different. You guys want to jump through? Maggie, you want to go first? Yeah. Okay, sure. we'll start at the one. So stand on top of it? Yep, just stand across it. Just uh -huh. spend a couple seconds, feels very level. Uh huh. Just a little bit of tilt towards yeah, me. A little okay. Bit. One is a very subtle slope. If we had a zero slope, there would be no tilt at all. But a one is a very subtle slope towards me. Okay, just a few seconds there, then we'll move on to the two. Two is still fairly gentle fairly, slope. Yeah, a little bit. Now the key is we want to move fairly quickly through these. If we stand on the slope for too long, our body will start to adjust and equalize the pressure and the feeling will start to dull. So we want to feel it really in the first one or two seconds. Okay. Three will start to jump yeah, out a little bit. I feel the slope, yeah. It's getting steeper. Okay. Okay. Now be sure when you're standing there not to straighten your legs. Now be sure to bend your knees softly. If you lock your knees out, if you make your knees straighter, you're not going to feel the slope as well. We're only going to feel in our feet. Yeah, I can't so, feel much when I'm straightening my knees. Well, if you just bend your knees softly, your quads will engage and you'll feel a difference between the two. Does yeah. that feel stronger? Yeah. This is good. That's perfect posture there. Right. Let's move on to the five. And that's a pretty severe slope on a five. Fours and fives are a lot of slope. Most putts are between one and three percent. We'll get fours and fives and even higher on longer putts. Right? Justin? All right. Now you can hold your putter any way that's comfortable for you. Okay. What does the one feel like to you? Just a little bit of, to the left. Just a tiny bit, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you feel the difference? A little bit. If it feels really subtle, go ahead and close your eyes for a second or two, and that should turn up the volume a little bit or amplify the feeling. Feel stronger? Oh, yeah, you really feel yourself falling more when you right. close your eyes. Okay. The ones and twos are subtle. Three should start to pop out a little bit. Do you feel a difference between two and three? Not much of a difference. Okay. No. If they don't feel much different, what's happening is you're leaning into the slope. He's not lining up level with the slope, he's leaning into the slope. So his body is trying to equalize the pressure. So we have to make sure we're kind of going with the slope or falling with the slope. So go ahead and let your body just kind of fall with the slope as if you were almost chipping downhill. And you should feel a lot more pressure on your, on your left leg. Is that better? Yeah, that's much different. That's better. Feel a bit stronger? Absolutely. Okay, good. Yeah. Let's try the four. Four is starting to become a lot of slope. Yeah. Pretty obvious. Yes. Okay. All right, good. All right. Fours and fives are very severe slope. Really severe, yeah. Okay. Typically, we won't get fives unless we're on long putts. You rarely get fives inside 20 feet. Yeah, that's a lot. Okay, now we're going to take what we've learned about putting a value on the slope, and we're going to start applying that to short putts, which is the foundation for every putt we read. When reading slope, be sure to bend your knees softly. Get your read within a few seconds or less. Stand up straight. Measure slope in percentage, not degrees. Now we're going to take what we learned about feeling slope and we're going to apply it to actual putts. We're going to start on short putts, which are defined as three to six feet, and we're going to learn how to feel our slope number and then convert that to a visual picture of the ball. So our process is we walk in and put our toes at the ball and we feel our number there. We don't want to be in front of the ball and we don't want to back up behind the ball either or we'll overread the putt. To get the most accurate possible read, toes right the ball. The other common mistake is people stand with their feet way too close together. The more close together your feet are, the less you're going to feel the slope. 
So try to think of it where you would put your feet hitting a wedge shot, about hip width apart, or if you're more comfortable, you can even go wider than that. So Justin and Maggie, if you guys want to step in, put your toes to the ball, and tell me what number you feel. I feel like a three. OK. Justin? Zero. Zero. OK, on short putts, typically you'll get between zero and four at the maximum, but there are zeros. You'll have several spots where you'll feel no side slope at all, which will be straight putts, obviously. You'll also start to feel uphill and downhill as you do this process. So we're not focusing on our uphill and downhill. We're only focusing on our side hill number, OK? Now, if you guys could move two balls to the right. OK, now, Maggie, what do you feel over there? Two, two and a half. Two, two and a half. Now, you can also go in between numbers. It doesn't have to be one or two or three. It can be two and a half. It can be a little more than two. It can even be a strong two if you want. Feel a one, one and a half. If you're not sure, it's safer to go for the higher number. OK. So I have that just right edge. Good. Definitely was stronger than one, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Good. It's a. It's about three. Three. Okay. So uh, it's about a ball out from the right. Okay. Perfect. Feel a one. Okay. So I have it on the edge. Which way? Right edge. Good. I feel a two and a half. Okay. A strong two. Strong two, okay. Okay, now when you read these putts, make sure you stay with your toes at the ball because when you back up, it's going to give you too much break. Okay. So read it with your toes at the ball and get your picture with the toes of the ball. Okay. That's a ball outside the right edge. Okay. Okay. The make percentage from five feet on PGA Tour is 80%. So the best players in the world will make four out of five of those putts. Okay. Now that we've learned how to feel slope and to create a picture of what the break is on short putts, we're going to go through a personal calibration process to make this read as accurate as possible for you as an individual. For accurate reads on short putts, it's important to get your reads with your toes at the ball and align your fingers to the lower edge of the hole. Now that we understand how to use the express read, we have to calibrate for our own personal body sizes to make it as accurate as possible. This calibration method will also let you adjust for different green speeds and for different ball speeds. To help us do that, we have Mark, Maggie, and Justin, who are all different heights and have different arm lengths. Once we go through this process, they're all going to see the exact same break once we get the same slope number. This board represents how much the ball breaks across a three slope at five different green speeds. You can see at a stimp 12, the ball breaks almost twice what it does at stimp 8, but we still are only going to hold up three fingers. So in order to see the break correctly, we have to change our arm position and either bend or straighten our arm to get the right picture. We're going to have our three players go through this process so that they all see the correct break no matter what the green speed is. Okay, what I want you all three to do is hold up three fingers, put the left edge of your finger on the flag stick, and the right side should be roughly on the 8 for green speed of 8. Is that roughly where you see it? Yes. Okay. Now bend it until it comes into 10. So as the greens get faster, you'll bring your hand closer to your face and you'll see more break. Oh. Cool. Good? Yeah. Okay. And now bring it in and go all the way to 12. Good. Roughly, a stimp 8 will be a straight arm, a stimp 10 will be a 45 degree bend, and a stimp 12 will be a 90 degree bend. But it really depends on the length of your arms and the size of your hands. Good. So this is roughly how you calibrate for green speed. If we need more break on a putt, we bend our arm more. If we need less break, we straighten, just like zooming a camera in and out. 
Okay? You can also use this as a method to calibrate for your ball speed. So if you want to hit the putt firm, you can go a little straighter. And if you want to hit the putt a little softer, you can go a little more bend with it. Everybody have a rough understanding of calibration? Yes. yes. Okay. It's important you understand that calibration is a dynamic process. It's not a fixed process. We never really know the correct stimp, so this is really a trial and error method. The idea is you really get it correct by hitting putts. In other words, you go out and you assume the green speed's an eight, let's say. You start with a straight arm. If you're missing low, bend your arm more. If I'm missing everything high, I need to straighten my arm a little bit. We're really calibrating to break more than green speed. The green speed can also change during your round. So you might start off in the morning straighter and you might have more bend later as the green starts to dry up. It's a dynamic process. Allow yourself to react naturally to that. So as you go out on the putting green and you hit putts, just naturally let your arm change until the picture you get matches the break. Now that you understand calibration, we're gonna apply what we've learned to our birdie putts, which are putts from seven to 20 feet. These putts you really need to be dialed in if you wanna make these putts versus just getting close. Now we're going to take what we learned on short putts and apply them to our medium range putts or what we call our birdie putts. It's typically between 7 to 20 feet. Two things we're going to do different. Because the slope can change on longer distances, we're not going to get our slope of the ball. We're going to walk roughly halfway up and get our slope number there. So we'll start at the ball just to feel the low side. So here I'm tilted to the right. So I'm going to walk in on the right side roughly halfway and get my number there. Here I feel a 4. I'm going to take my 4 back to the ball. And now the only other difference is I'm going to hold on my hand, but I'm going to line up the lower edge on the flag stick this time. It's not going to be on the lower edge of the hole. It's going to be on the flag stick itself or the center of the hole. That's going to give me the correct break for our medium range putts. Once I get my read, then I'm aiming on this side of my hand. And I'm going to turn and hit it there. Justin, you want to take us through it? Sure. OK. So start at the ball, feel your low side. OK. Walk in on the low side because we don't want to step in our line. How much slope do you feel? Four. Four, OK. Bring four back to the ball. Get your picture. Roughly how much break do you see? About three feet. About, about three feet of break on this. OK, good. Now just pick your spot. It's a good putt. The read was really good, a little bit short. And what if I like to see, instead of the point, what if I like to see the path or the curvature of the ball? Yes, yeah, so we have a method that we can use our hand to also see the actual curve of the putt or the entry point into the hole. I'm going to get behind the ball, turn my hand up, put the top finger in the hole, and now I'm going to drop my hand and turn it at the same time, like a door hinge, and it's going to create a curve on the ground. That's the actual curve that the ball takes on its way to the hole so that you can see exactly where the ball is going. Okay, good putt. Thanks. Now we're gonna to go to a slightly different putt for Maggie. We're gonna do a 10 foot downhill putt with less break. Let's come on over here. So there's about a 10 footer. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be less side slope, but go ahead and go through the same process. Okay. On these straighter putts, it's very important that you start at the ball to get the low side correct. Yeah, right side. Okay. Not much though. Not it's much. more downhill. So what kind of slope do you feel? It's about one. Okay, one sideways. Yeah. Downhill, but only one more sideways. More downhill than side hill. Okay, yeah. good. Small number. So hold up. One finger. One finger shows you roughly how much break. Uh, a cup out. Okay, good. Great putt. Yay. Very good. <laughs> side is low, hit the ball. Left side, okay. Walking on the left side. Now be careful where your line is because you're almost in your line right here, so just go a little lower, okay. Two. All right. Good putt. Awesome. Where'd he go? Thanks. Magster. Mm-hmm. Left to right. A lot, lot, of, the, lot of slope of the a ball, lot, right? A lot, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Feel like a five. Okay, five. Five. Five and downhill. Yeah, five and downhill. 